All right, so this morning I'm doing a little minor overhaul on my uh, first AR I ever bought. I grew up with guns. I've had them since I was a small kid, but uh, we never had any ARs. We always had, uh, you know, military surplus, shotguns, stuff like that. Uh, ARs were just out of our price range whenever I was growing up. It's not wasn't really affordable to us at the time. I'm talking about back when when SKSs were $75 a copy and you could get a 1200 round case of ammo for 80 bucks. Uh, definitely not the case anymore, but AR prices are way down. So uh, I joined the, the Marine Corps in 2003 and uh, a couple of years after that, whenever I finally moved out of the barracks, uh, I, bought, I bought an AR or I built an AR. Uh, it's been it's been a great rifle. It's been the one that's lasted the longest. I no longer have the big pile of ARs. I cut down to where basically I've got an AR, my wife's got an AR, and I put all the rest of that money into bills and ammo, basically. Um, I may still add a few in the future, an A2 and an A4, and I've got the I've started building the parts pile to build a uh, uh, to build a, an A1 clone. It won't be an exact clone, but it'll look like an A1 if you stand back far enough. Uh, so today, uh, or a while back, whenever I was shooting this, I noticed that the groups have started to really open up. I'm talking like uh, five inch groups at 50 yards. Um, I've double checked the barrel nut. I've double checked everything I can think of that would cause accuracy issues. I've never kept round counts on, the, on this thing. Uh, I have no idea how much ammo I've had through it, but uh, I usually average, uh, you know, 6,000 rounds a year or so. Um, that's it. That's for everything, rifle and pistol, and uh, most of my rifle stuff is shot out of this. Um, so I've probably had this for 11 years. There were there are there were years where I didn't shoot it very much because I wasn't around it. You know, I got moved to California and got stuck back in the barracks. I didn't want to deal with checking a weapon in and out of the armory, so I just left it at home. So for about a year, it didn't get shot at all. But anyway, <clears throat> groups starting to open up. I've checked everything else I can think of, so I think it's just time to swap out the barrel. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to fix a few other things. It's due for a spring a, a spring replacement. I never really tracked round counts up until recently, so I have no idea how much ammo has been down the barrel of this gun. Um, so I'm going to swap out. This is a 14 and a half inch chrome lined uh, barrel with a pinned phantom flash hider on it. Uh, this used to be a full regular uh, front sight gas block and I chopped that down and kind of smoothed it out to make a low profile because I went to optics and I just stuck a pop-up sight on the GG and G. This GG and G quad rail is old, it's heavy, it's very heavy. Same thing for the barrel, the barrel was not a pencil profile, it was an M4 pro profile so you got a lot more weight there. Uh, probably going to keep the TLR for a while. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might move to something else like a, a HLX. <clears throat> the upper receiver was a a Rock River Arms upper receiver, and uh, this is a Franken gun. Uh, there are parts from all over the place. The lower receiver is from Gunsmoke Industries. I don't even know if Gunsmoke exists anymore. I'll have to look it up. Um, Magpul Mo grip, Magpul Mo stock, and a. Uh, 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 Booty Packer, Bonnie Packer, whatever the name of that company is, two, two point sling, very similar to a Vickers two point sling. I've had this almost as long as I've had the gun. And uh, the optic is relatively recent. I've kind of bounced around to stuff. I've used ACOGs, I've used various uh, levels of red dot as far as quality and price. Um, and this, I went, this is a Weaver V3, so it's a 1 to 3 by 20. The reason I went with this is because it, the cost, it's, it's under its under $200. Weaver is a well-known name. It doesn't have target turrets. I don't like target turrets on the, on uh, anything that I'm not, that, unless I'm shooting a, shooting a target gun, I just don't care for target turrets. Uh, and the weight. So most one to four variables are in the one pound range just for the scope before you add a mount. This uh, scope is eight ounces, so it's half the weight of a one to four, but you do lose, uh, you do lose one power uh, magnification and I've got it in a cheap UTG uh, quick quick detach uh, base. The UTG mounts they don't cost that much but 
you do get what you pay for. They weigh a little more than others. And uh, they cheap out on stuff like they don't put Loctite on anything. So whenever you get, if you decide to get a QD mount like this one, you have to take all the screws out of it and Loctite them. Because if not, it's going to fall off in the first magazine or so. <clears throat> uh, since I put, since I went through it and checked everything and Loctited everything, I've not had any problem with, the, with these mounts. I've used a couple of them. Uh, so what I'm going to replace it with, replace today is uh, number one, the barrel. It's getting a 16 inch Faxon pencil uh, pencil profile barrel. Uh, it's gonna, I've just got a regular low, low profile uh, gas block. Uh, I just recently found a company that builds these old style front, or the, the uh, front sight base gas blocks in the .625. And uh, they don't cost that much, or 30 bucks or so. And I think I'm gonna get that one and chop it down and do what I did to this one, because I like having the bayonet look. <clears throat> the gas, uh, the gas system is a a mid link, so we got that. <clears throat> I'm gonna replace the uh, Mo grip with a K2 grip. I've been in a few motorcycle accidents in my life, and both my wrists have been broken over that time. So the angle of the regular Mo grip doesn't work well for me anymore. It causes a bit of wrist pain after a while. The straighter grip on the K2. Uh, I like a lot. I'm going to go with the old style A1 duckbill uh, three prong flash hider. Sorry, not a duckbill. This is just a three prong. Uh, I just like the way it looks, and I'm not real wrapped around the axle about flash hiders. If I wasn't going to use this one, I'd just use a standard A2 flash hider. <clears throat> Got my various springs. And. Uh, for the, I'm going to replace the heavy old GGMG with this. Uh, it is in burnt, burnt bronze. I may paint it. I may not. I don't know. Uh, as you can tell, this old one's been painted, even the barrel. I can tell you this. Uh, when you cry on a barrel and shoot it a bunch, like do a couple of uh, mag dumps through it, it turns the Krylon pink, and then you got to reshoot it. Uh, this gun's been beat up pretty good. Uh, forget who makes this one. Uh, I ordered it from Primary Arms. It was on sale. That's why I bought it. Well, the fact it was on sale and the fact it weighed, it was lightweight-ish. It's, it's 10 ounces, which is a lot lighter than this, this old this old GG&G here. It is a single piece and it has its own barrel nut. The GG&G is actually a two piece and just clamps around the stock barrel nut. And it had de detachable uh, rail, uh, a detachable rail system. When I first got this, it had rails all over it. And just taking the rails off cut about uh, three three quarters of a pound off the front of the gun. That's these rails were heavy. So the only rail it has on it now is the top rail for my front sight and this 45 degree rail for my light. So uh, now I'm going to go into time lapse mode and tear this thing down and rebuild it.
rebuild complete, well, mild, mild overhaul. Uh, she definitely feels a lot lighter already. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about the color. I may, I'm thinking about repainting it maybe. I mean, it's not like it would be take long, it's just Krylon. Kind of like the burnt bronze for uh, fruit float to uh, feels pretty good in the hand. Uh, I don't know if you can see in the time lapse, but I tried putting this up here in front of the front sight. I've tried that before with the old rail and with how low this optic sits. Uh, the TLR1 sits in its field of view, so you lose about half your field of view in the bottom if you try to run this on at the 12 o'clock. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is just get a 45 degree M lock uh, rail section and go back where I had it before. I'm used to running it there, so it's not hard to actuate. Uh, but I'm happy with it. It's definitely lighter than the old setup. Kind of digging the three prong flash hider there. Uh, there is actually a special tool for that. My special tool today was a big flat blade screwdriver. It's obviously not the most elegant way to do it, but uh, it gets the job done. And there's no, I don't think there's a proper way to clock the uh, three prong flash hider like there is the A2 flash hider. So I just set it up to where uh, one of the prongs is at the 12 o'clock. So that way if, they, if it does flash or I'm shooting in the dark, the flash comes up in a V instead of directly into my uh, sight picture. So next step is to uh, run out to the range and zero it. I'm not going to be able to do that today. Uh, we've been getting so much rain out here that the range that I'm a, a member at is completely flooded. Um, and you just driving in there is not going to happen. Uh, so for now this is going back in the, in the uh, safe and uh, I'll break the wife's rifle out and set that to the side uh, for home defense use. But uh, this will go into the safe until I can re-zero it and get my light put back on it. So here you go. Mild overhaul of a 12-year-old AR. Just a little bit of re little, little bit of a refresh here and there. Uh, the spring that I the trigger springs that I the hammer and the trigger springs I used were from from JP, uh, they are listed as extra power. I usually run some Wolf extra power springs in there because I like to shoot a lot of Russian steel case. <coughs> Sometimes you can get lots of that that have uh, that have weak or that have hard primers. And uh, this, if you have a weak hammer spring or a standard hammer spring, it sometimes may not set it off. I found shooting with a bunch of people that uh, whenever they start having hard uh, hard primer strikes where they're not setting off the ammunition it's typically the hammer spring is just worn out um, I run my guns on a 5,000 round spring re replacement now since I started tracking handguns rifles whatever and I haven't had that problem anymore uh, not long after I got this and I shot a bunch I shot it a bunch uh, I started having hard primer strikes with brown bear and I thought oh, there's something wrong with the ammo no there's something wrong with my rifle uh, the hammer spring was just weak, and you could tell uh, you could there was a marked difference between the old hammer spring and the new hammer spring. Whenever you know you may take the rifle down and be like, "Oh, this hammer spring feels fine," but uh, whenever you go to drop in a new hammer spring, you're going to be able to immediately tell the difference on how much stiffer the new hammer spring is compared to the old hammer spring. They do wear out; springs wear out when you use them. Uh, I replaced the buffer spring actually. Here's the old one, and the new one was about an inch longer than this one, maybe an inch and a half. This one uh, has had some rounds on it, so time to clean all this up. I got to go take over the kids from the wife, and uh, till next time.